last thing that you should never, ever, ever do as a respiratory therapist. And never, ever, Big Money Bound TV, RRT Posse YouTube. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I release scheduled videos every Monday, 12 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, but I also release some unscheduled videos throughout the week. Now, if you're returning, welcome back. I appreciate all of the support. Thank you, today's video. The last thing I want you to do, man, it's to work hard, grind, two years in the program, struggling, crying, head hurting, studying, buying the study guides to help you get through it. You do all this work and you finally become a respiratory therapist. And now you in a situation where your license is now in jeopardy because you did something that you should not have done. I don't want you to get your license then lose it within one year. What must you avoid? What must you not do? What is the quickest way to lose your license as a respiratory therapist? Hey, keep watching, dog. Keep watching. The quickest way to lose your license as a respiratory therapist. Doing anything related to patient health care, anything without a written order. Written, written in the written, not verbal. Oh, go draw me an ABG. No problem, I'm a respiratory therapist. Hey, man, you going down a bad alley? Boy, that's a bad alley. It's dangerous over there. Be careful, Randy. How's your ABG dangerous? Listen to me, man. It's a lot of complications that could arise when you draw an ABG. For example, you can have an infection at the puncture site. You can like arterial occlusion what else you could somebody could be on blood thinners let's say they're on blood thinners they already got low platelets a low blood count and now you draw abg and you can't get the blood to stop they losing blood losing blood losing blood losing blood losing blood now they got to get emergency blood transfusion just say that happens first thing they're gonna do is say who put in the order for abg you're gonna say the doctor they're gonna be like oh, where is it if there's no order and you did something, that's coming back on you. Now, if the doctor put in an order, they would address the doctor. But you did it because it was verbal. Well, he told me to do it. Well, who else heard him? Ain't nobody else. I know somebody else heard him. It was, it was a whole group of people around me. I know somebody heard him. Ain't nobody heard nothing, dog. Ain't nobody heard nothing, man. Then you can get an infection at the puncture site. Like, that can become infected. Then that's a nosal, nosocomial infection. infection. Well, like, you... Come to the hospital without something and you leave the hospital with something like you acquired this infection while you're at the hospital, they call that nosocomal infection. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But I think I'm right. What else, man? Also, like when you're going to draw ABGs, you also got a risk of like puncturing yourself, hitting yourself with that needle. Cross my fingers, I'm blessed. It's never happened to me. I hope it never does. I'm planning for it to never happen. But let's say you go in there and draw an ABG, you make a mistake, you stick the patient, then you stick yourself. Let's God forbid the patient got something serious. Hep C, HIV. Now you don't stuck yourself, but you stuck a patient, your head's spinning in circles. But you know, the hospital got you covered. They're going to take you to the, the nurse, the clinic. They're going to draw your blood, make sure everything is okay. Now let's say you come down with something you never had before. You poke the patient that has something. Now you got something. You got injured on the job. They gonna investigate that. Okay. Since he got hurt on the job, we should look after him. Well, she got hurt on the job, we should look after her. He was doing something that was ordered. She was doing something that was ordered. Wait, wait, wait. No, she wasn't. They had no business even over there doing that. Nobody put in that order. Now you at home like this here on your last bed with nothing to eat with nothing. Because you don't... Did something without following the order, man. So that's deeper than even losing your license. That's down to losing your life. So, hey, man. Don't do nothing later. Be careful, though. Be careful. Wait, I gotta take it down. I'll take you to the losing your license to losing your life. I don't know where I'm going with this on. Y'all stay with me, but y'all stay with me. 
So let's say, man, you got a doctor. It's a patient, tachypnic, labored breathing. The doctor orders BiPAP verbally. All right, man, this is what's going on. We, all, we see what's going on. Can you please put the patient on BiPAP? Hey, that's no problem. Of course I can put the patient on BiPAP. But can you put it in order? But come on, ready, you guys going on? Yeah, yeah. We see what's going on. Yeah, we see what's going on. But in the midst of me going to get the BiPAP, the doctor can put in the order. So once I put this mask on, there's an order in the computer saying the doctor wants this mask on. Because the doctor has to put in the settings. Now, of course, you can put in your own settings. Yeah, we respiratory therapists, of course. But you want to be covered in case something does happen. Let's say you put in the settings where, like, you're trying to, like, hyperoxygenate. You put in the peep of eight. Normal people is five. You put it. You put up. You, you put it to people eight. You don't, you don't think that's too bad. Patient has a certain lung condition. You mess around and you don't pop the lungs. You got a pneumothorax. Hey, who told you to put the peep at eight? Well, the EPAP. Who, who told you to put the EPAP at eight? I didn't say that. I put in twelve over five. You put eight. You in front of that judge, dog. You in front of that judge. I'm telling you, man. This stuff is is serious. But sometimes with the midst of like everything going on, you're trying to help patients, patient safety, you could just like do the right thing, which is taking a risk. Of course, you got to put the patient on BiPAP. You got to get them oxygenated. You want to get them ventilated. We trying to help, but no good deed goes unpunished. That's the old saying, man. And let's say another example. You put a patient on BiPAP. No order was ever put in. You got a patient on BiPAP. Patient on BiPAP doing fine, man. Had trouble breathing. They got the BiPAP on. Everything good. Nurse say he doing good. You say everything going good. Cool, cool. It get around 3, 4 o'clock. You hear cold blue, cold blue, cold blue. On the patient that just had a BiPAP on. You like, man, what's going on? The patient had on a BiPAP. Well, we came in here. The BiPAP was disconnected. Patient had stopped breathing. We had to do CPR. Had to intubate them. Patient stopped breathing. Now, the mask don't came off. It don't got disconnected. The BiPAP stopped ventilating. The alarm was going off. Nobody heard it. Sometimes it can be, hey man, nobody heard it. Something happened to that patient. The patient family gonna investigate that, see what's going on, especially if the patient loses his life. Let's say a patient didn't make it. The family is hurt, emotionally scarred. There's lawyers coming in from everywhere. A lawsuit at a hospital, you know how much money that's gonna bring in? Man, this lawyer's calling you, hey, pro bono, I got you. I, I, hey, pro bono, I only get paid if you win. Bro, they looking over everything, looking over everything. Okay, we got right here. Samantha documented a BiPAP order. She documented for a BiPAP settings. She had a patient on 12 over 6. Everything was doing good. So they documented for a BiPAP, but I don't see an order for a BiPAP. And the reason the patient passed away because the BiPAP popped off? Who put in this order? So had the patient probably been on a nasal cannula, 100% breathing mask, or a high flow machine, or intubated right away, put on the vent right away, this could have never happened. But instead, somebody put on a BiPAP that wasn't even ordered without consulting the doctor. They over there making this. Therapist didn't even consult the doctor, didn't talk to the nurse. Bro, they, hey man, they getting, they getting friendly fingers over there, man. They getting real friendly over there. Hey man, dog, do not do nothing without an order. You need an order, man. It's okay to, you put them on without, you, you can put them on without an order. Within two to three minutes, you're gonna make sure that order's in that computer. If not, hey, get on the doctor's back. Hey, man, hey, I need you to put this order in. I'm gonna have to disconnect the bike out. You gotta disconnect the bike I'll put it in right away. Talk to these, we all human, man. Talk to these people out there, we talk to you. Like, we're just talking, communicating. You gotta like hunt these people down there, man. Let them know you need what you need. You need a BiPAP order. You need orders for BiPAP, man. You hook the patient up to BiPAP. Family member coming there and turn it off. Mess with it. Don't know what the hell going on with the BiPAP. Who put the BiPAP on? Why is the BiPAP in the room? Where is the order? Verbal order is garbage. I need everything written. If it ain't written down, it's just as good as doo doo brown. That don't make sense, but y'all get what I'm saying. All right, now, man. The last reason, the last thing, the most important thing, the last thing that you should never, ever, ever do as a respiratory therapist, never, ever, ex 
extubate a patient without a written order. Never do that. I have seen this happen. A patient was on by a patient was on a ventilator, invasive ventilation, intubated on the ET tube. They did the weaning trials, did the weaning parameters, ABG blood gas. Everything is going good. Everything is going smooth. Patient has passed all the weaning trials and is approved for extubation. The doctor said, go ahead and pull out the tube. Go ahead. I witnessed him tell the therapist this. The order wasn't put in. This wasn't put in. The therapist extubated that patient. Everything was good for the first five minutes. But once that six minute hit, patient went downhill fast. Downhill fast. A cold blue had to be called. They tried to re-intubate the patient. It was a difficult intubation. Patient could not be intubated. Could not be ventilated. Patient didn't make it. What happened to the respiratory therapist that took that tube out? I don't know. I haven't seen him since. I don't, I don't know. Have you seen him? I don't know. First thing they said, who gave the order to exubate this patient? The doctor. You think a doctor is going to throw itself underneath the bus? I know it's not right. Ethically, it's not right. But you think they can throw him under that bus? Doctor said, Man, I don't know why he did that. So you know me. They asked me what happened. Boy, I seen everything. The doctor told him to extubate the patient. Yeah, he lying. That guy's lying. I've been here a year. Dog been here 10 plus years. Who you think they going? Come on now. Now dog eventually went to another hospital. Got a fresh start, clean slate. I ain't seen my dog since, man. This here was on, what, 2016? What we in now, 2020? Yeah, I ain't seen dog since, man. So hey. I bring you these videos, man, that always try to help you, give you some information. Never, ever, ever, bro. I say don't do nothing without a written order. Nothing. I say don't do nothing without it. That's just me personally. I say don't do nothing. And if you do something without a written order, make sure you send you a prayer up, man. Do something. Make sure you send you some prayers up. Hey, you taking a huge risk, dog. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support. Big Money Bound TV, RRT Posse. I got us. Thank you.